Hi everyone, my name is uh, Luca Mariot and I'm here to present this paper titled CoinGP Convolutional in Painting with Genetic Programming, which is a joint work with uh, Domago Jakobovic, Luca Manzoni, Stepan Pizek and uh, Mauro Castelli. So the problem that we address in this paper is that of image in painting, which basically starts from a given damaged image, so where there are some missing pixels, and we want to see how we can fill such missing pixel in order to have a plausible reconstruction of this image. This is a task that has been ex uh, extensively investigated in the image processing literature, and there are several approaches uh, addressing it. In particular, there are exemplar-based methods, diffusion-based techniques, and most recently, uh, deep learning techniques gained, I'd say, a lot of popularity on this task, especially convolutional neural networks and genetic adversarial networks, or GANs. So the fact is that if we look into evolutionary, in the evolutionary algorithm realm, there are not many works addressing this task. Actually, there are almost none, and in particular, there are no work using evolutionary algorithm in a convolutional sense, so similarly to, to CNN, in order to reconstruct a damaged image or to do basically a convolutional in painting processing of a damaged image. So what we want to investigate in this paper is to use genetic programming to see if genetic programming is able uh, to be like a viable convolutional in painting technique. And in particular, we focused on these two research questions. So whether GP can learn the distribution of pixels in a data set of complete images, so without actually missing uh, any missing picture, pixels. We just want to see if it is able to predict um, <clears throat> the pixels in an image uh, in a supervised learning task. And uh, the second research question is whether GP can give a plausible reconstru reconstruction of a single degraded image by training on the available pixels, so those that are remaining in the in the damaged image. Okay, how can we do that with genetic programming? So the basic idea comes from uh, the set from the from the domain of convolutional neural networks. So we slide a small window uh, over the image, such that at each position of the window over the image, we use the surrounding pixels as an input to a GP3, as you can see here, and the output will be the prediction of the GP3 for the central pixel, which we assume, for example, to be missing, okay? And uh, we experimented in our approach with two topologies for the, for the neighborhoods. One is the classic Moore neighborhood, which is a square neighborhood three by three, where each, um, each cell, each pixel basically uh, will exploit the information from the north, south, west, and east pixel plus the diagonal pixel. And then we experimented also with the von Neumann neighborhood where we only have the north, south, west, and east pixels at our disposal. Okay, we said that we want to investigate our research questions in a sense of supervised learning. So for the first research question, which is about learning the distribution of the pixels in a complete data set of images, we used as a, for the training and the test sets some random samples for, from the MNIST data set, which is quite uh, classically and popular among uh, image processing tasks, especially with uh, machine learning techniques such as neural networks. And the idea is that here, in these samples of the MNIST uh, images, we don't remove any pixel, but we retain the correct value just by hiding it uh, to the, the GP3 in order to see if it is able to, uh, to give a prediction which is close to the original pixel. On the other hand, for the second task, we focused on single damaged images, such as the boat image that you can see here on the right, and we apply like a random pixel removal uh, procedure such that it preserves complete neighborhoods. So this means that each missing pixel will still have access, we still have um, access to all neighboring pixel in its neighborhood from the sliding window, which means also that there are, cannot be missing pixels that are adjacent. So this is 
quite an unrealistic assumption, but actually this uh, work is quite preliminary. So we wanted just to see if uh, GP was, uh, was a feasible method, even working with a somewhat unrealistic assumption. And then for future work, we will see in the conclusion that we will leave it for <clears throat> as, an, uh, as an improvement for, uh, for this work to address also incomplete neighborhoods. So in this case, the training set basically is the, are the available pixels, while the test set will be the removed pixels where to test our GP trees evolved by the evolutionary process. Now, the fitness function, you need to define a fitness function to address the supervised learning task with the genetic programming. So for the first supervised learning task, so we have a data set of complete images coming from the MNIST data set. The training set will be a union of these sets FK, where each FK will be what? Will be a set of fitness cases corresponding to a single image IK in the MNIST sample. What is a, a fitness case? It has this particular form from a formal point of view, but intuitively what we have here is a vector where the first components will be the values of the of the pixels in the neighborhoods at a specific location ij while the last coordinate will be the correct label in the center of the neighborhood so x ij on the other hand for the training set uh, in the in the second supervised learning task we take p as the set of available pixels, so S on the other hand will represent the subset of randomly removed pixels from the, from the image. And uh, the training set will be again a set of uh, fitness cases, but this one will be just a single set of fitness cases because we have a single image, where again we will have uh, the first components composed of the neighboring pixels in the sliding window and the correct label, which will be um, the value of the pixel at the center of the, of, the slide, of the sliding window. The fitness function finally measures the root mean square error between the prediction done by uh, GP3 tau, let's call it, on a particular um, neighborhood position and the corresponding correct label of the of, on the training set, on the particular, on the specific fitness case on the training set. And we sum this root mean square error over all possible fitness cases that we have in, uh, in our image. And we normalize by the, um, of course, by the dimension, by the size of the training set, which can be either T1 or T2. Okay, for the experimental phase, we chose as parameters uh, quite a classic, um, classic setting for, for the parameters related specifically to, to genetic programming. So you can see here the functional set, the population size, selection operator, and so on and so forth. The only uh, particularity or difference that we have from classic setting in genetic programming is that we use a linear scaling operator in order to clip the output of a GP3 prediction in the grayscale images, so in the range of 0 to 155, because we are considering only images in grayscale with a definition of 8-bit, okay? And for the first task, so the task on the MNIST dataset, we repeated our experiments for statistical significance for 30 independent runs, while for the second task on each damaged image considered, we experimented with 100 uh, independent runs. Okay, so what can we say about the first experiment on the MNIST dataset? Uh, the training set, like we said, is a sample of images from the MNIST dataset, and the training set is another uh, sample, or let's say disjunct sample from the same uh, from the same dataset. In particular, the training set is composed of 1,000 images selected from the MNIST dataset. What we can see from the distribution of the of the best fitness achieved by by the best GP individual over all 30 experimental runs is that both in the case of um, of the von Neumann neighborhood, which you can see here uh, in uh, in this figure, together with the with the Moore neighborhood, and also the Moore neighborhood are able to learn the pixel distribution 
in a significantly better way than a baseline predictor. What is a baseline predictor? In our case, the baseline predictor is just the function which outputs the average, the arithmetic average of the pixel intensities in the neighborhood. And in this case, we uh, achieved statistically significant uh, better results than the baseline, so lower um, root mean square errors. For the second experiment, we uh, tested two single images, which are the boat that I already showed you in the previous slides and the Gold Hill images, both resized to, um, to the dimension of 256 by 256 pixels in grayscale. And we adopted the following procedure for randomly removing about 20% of the pixel from each of the two images. In particular, we say that the every two columns, we keep the first one, let's say as it is, without removing any pixel. And from the second one, we remove a random subset of 100 pixel that are non-adjacent. So in this way, we enforce a removal of the pixels where each missing pixel will have a complete neighborhood. So there won't be uh, missing pixels in any of the, um, of the surrounding pixel of another missing pixels or equivalently, there are no adjacent missing pixels. And what we obtained in our experiments on these two test images is that again, GP is able to score a lower uh, fitness, so lower prediction errors than the baseline predictors which compute the, the average of the pixels in the in the neighborhood. This is the case for both neighborhoods with respect to the, to the respective baselines, but we can see here something a bit more precise than in the previous experiments, in particular that the Moore neighborhood is much better than the von Neumann one despite the curious fact that actually more neighborhood for combinatorial reason can only uh, can have less fitness cases because it uses more uh, surrounding pixels and we need all of them to be non-missing on the other hand von neumann is using less pixel in the surrounding so it can have uh, less it can use more fitness cases but on the other hand it performs worse on this particular prediction task and this is to give you like a couple of examples. We draw like a um, couple of best individuals from the from all the experimental runs of, of GP with the Moore neighborhood and the von Neumann neighborhood and show you here what are the reconstructed images for the both uh, image and the, and the Gold Hill images. Here below you can see the differences between the reconstructed image and the original image so in white these are you can see here the differences which are increased tenfold so you can see here that they are not really visible so it means that the uh, prediction scores are quite uh, low which is already backed up by our experimental findings on the on the fitness distribution and also an interesting finding here is that these um, this error is mostly distributed on the edges of the images, which is expected actually because edges actually represent high frequency uh, regions of an image where there is a sudden change in the pixel intensities. And this actually violates one of the basic hypotheses of, of the in-painting techniques, which basically say that the value of uh, the distribution of a pixel is independent from the rest of the image given, however, the distribution of its surrounding pixel. So in this local assumption, this is okay when we have low frequency regions where there are no abrupt changes in the pixel intensities, where there are abrupt changes, such as in the edges of an image, such as here, for example, on these poles of the, of the ship, this assumption no longer holds. So for concluding, for the first research question, we show that CoinGP can successfully learn the distribution of the pixels intensities in a data set of complete images without removing any pixels. And this is significantly better than the baseline predictors, which predicts the average of the surrounding pixels. For the second research question, we showed that CoinGP is able to provide plausible in painted images, as you saw in the example before, with the Moore neighborhood with working better than the von Neumann one. 
So for future work, we want to address in particular the case of incomplete neighborhood because like we said, complete neighborhood are quite an unrealistic uh, assumption in a, in a real world uh, scenario. Uh, consider also multi-layer architectures similarly to what is done in uh, convolutional neural networks or in deep learning techniques in, uh, in general. So where we have a layer of GP that does, for example, in painting and another one that uses another uh, filter, for example, for uh, edge detection. And finally, compare, of course, with the state-of-the-art methods such as uh, convolutional neural networks. This was all from my side. Thank you for uh, your attention.